Fuck. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to be more fair. Nowadays, I try to not rant as much or I try to not shit on people's work because God only knows. I'm sure they tried, right? I have to think that the people behind the scenes, the filmmakers, the writers, everybody involved, the producers, well, the producers probably didn't give a fuck. But I have to think, for my own sanity, that they did not purposely make a film this shitty. What's going on, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, a.k.a. Review King MB, and I am still doing my 31 Days of Horror movie reviews, and fuck. I took the biggest gamble, I took the biggest chance... I watched this film called Terrell. Terrell is a 2024 film that is directed by two people. It took two people to fuck this shit up. Anna Halberg and Spencer Cohen. Once again, Goose Raba. I'm sure they meant well. The plot of this movie is you have these group of friends. I almost said teenager, but there's no way they're supposed to be that young. I'm going to say they're in their early 20s. And they're out celebrating one of the friend's birthday at this rented... Is it a cabin? Is it a home? Who gives a shit? Who gives a fuck? They end up finding this random box of tarot cards and come to find out it's cursed. Of course, they don't know it's cursed. So, of course, they read each and every single one of the characters' tarot. And so, I guess because they read the tarot cards for each person, each person now is cursed, is damned to die. Just like this movie after I watched it because fuck this, man. I mean, seriously. It's 2024. We are and should be way past the time period where generic bullshit lazy horror films are being made and put out for the public to consume because come on you know as much as i dislike the term elevated horror at least those movies try at least those movies there's an attempt to have a higher intellect of what the plot is or the acting or just the direction and how it's shot and just to try to make it look as unique as possible. Do I wish it wasn't called that? Yes. Because it implies that every other horror movie is shit. And then I watch a movie like this and go, fuck, are they right? <laughs> is, is, is that why we've come up with that term? Because this movie... There is so much wrong. First, let's talk about the acting. My God, I want to be nice because, God forbid, if I were to do a horror movie like this, maybe the direction, maybe the script, maybe the writing, maybe the editing of the movie after the fact would make me look just as shitty as all of these people look. There's not one decent actor in this movie. Everybody, especially the first half, comes across as so unbelievable in these scenarios. I mean, at the beginning, I don't even buy them as friends. There's no chemistry. There's no real human interaction with each other. But then especially when they start to get killed off one by one, the other members of the group, their reaction to their friends being killed is so just like, oh man, so-and-so just died. That's crazy. So anyways, let's like nobody cares. Nobody cares. Now maybe you could say the third act, uh the the acting got slightly better because shit ramped up at such a level where there was a lot of screaming and a lot of crying and a lot of shit like that. Like for example, the main character is played by Harriet Slater. I 
don't believe I've seen her or the majority of this cast before. But I'm mentioning her because she was the one who is somehow able to read the tarot cards. She the, the one who... I The explanation of how she was able to read this, too, kind of blew my mind. She just said, when somebody in the group asked her, Hey, how are you able to read these cards and know what they mean and know how they work? She says... Because I taught myself. <laughs> That's the level of writing we're dealing with. And she has an ex-boyfriend. Like, they literally just broke up. So, obviously, the trip at the beginning is very awkward. He's played by a Dane Bradley. And I tried to relate to him, right? I tried to say that, well, maybe he has a point of view. Maybe he's not the complete dickhead and not understanding asshole that he's kind of first presented as. But as the movie unravels, there's no sense of getting to know these characters. There's no sense of how their personalities are. It's the most generic, straightforward. They are faces with meat bodies that are here to get killed off one by one, like I said. The other actress I want to mention... Only because I found her attractive. <laughs> Larson Thompson. She was fine. But more importantly, she looked good, so I am mentioning her by name. There's a few other people here, but I'm not going to bother to sit here and read the fucking IMBD credits. I have to mention, though, that one of the members of the cast, and I don't know how the fuck or why the fuck he's in this movie, but Jacob Babylon who some people might recognize from Spider-Man, well, all three Spider-Man movies, the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. He plays his best friend, Ned. And I saw him and I thought, why the fuck is Jacob Babylon in this movie? Like, why? Don't you have a Spider-Man movie to make? I know it's like, well, he can't just sit around and wait for Marvel, Sony, to call him for the next movie. Okay, sure, fine. But to be in bullshit like this... You gotta keep your stock at a certain level at least. To go from here all the way down to below the dirt. I'm talking about below dog shit. Come on, man. You pick a better agent. Figure something out. I remember seeing a commercial like last year of some TV show on the sci-fi channel where he was playing a vampire. Fucking hell. Shit. The cheap jump scares was like huge red flag because I wasn't digging the writing. I wasn't digging the acting, but I thought maybe the scares will come. Maybe the horror aspect will come. And no, it's cheap ass jump scares that did not make me jump, that did not scare me. It's PG-13 and I'm not one to say that a horror movie can't be scary at PG-13 or that a movie can't be effective at PG-13. I would never say that because there are plenty of examples where you can do that. This movie though, it's just, it's PG-13 for the cheap reasons, for the lazy reasons, because it's not really trying anything. It's not really going for the gore. There were a couple kills or deaths that had some blood in it, probably more than a PG-13 movie should have allowed. But because it's so lazy, because it's so uninspired, because it's so not scary, I'm not even going to be willing to give it credit for any of that. How does this all work? I was trying to rack my brain of any time you have the supernatural possession, or in this case, some supernatural entity is out there, and because something's cursed, it's going to go after the characters. And anytime that happens, I always have to say, how does this make sense? How am I, the audience, supposed to be watching this and have some attachment to root for them? There's no realistic way that they should be able to defeat this thing. That's what happens a lot with supernatural movies, is that the plot is so extreme and out there and out of the realm of believability that I'm like this supernatural thing this this cursed object can essentially do whatever the fuck it wants it can go after you wherever you are even if you try to run away even if you try to hide it will find you it can manipulate things it can manipulate the rooms and the doors and the windows and it can come from the fucking ceiling like there's nothing that you can do to stop this from happening it's just 
It's inevitable. We're sitting here waiting for them to die. And there's no suspense for me with that. The ending. My God with this bullshit. I was very close. I had the thought in my head at least two or three times to just shut it off. To just turn this movie off. Why am I going to bother? I don't care what happens. I don't want to know what happens. But I kept it on for one sole reason. I was watching this at home. (laughs) And that is what made me not probably as angry as I could have been if I was watching this in the theater. Holy fuck, I would be yelling at the top of my lungs, screaming if I had seen this in the theater. But I said, it's an hour and a half. I kept it on. I saw how it ended. I rolled my eyes and said this was a big fat waste of time. In retrospect, I do wish I had just shut it off. Fuck this movie. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. If it wasn't obvious before what my rating was going to be, if you somehow got this far and didn't know that that's what I was going to say about this, then you need to watch more of my reviews <laughs> or my rants. I really hope that there's not a whole lot more of these for my 31 days, especially when it comes to the more recent films, because I want to be positive. I want to see good movies. I want to praise movies for doing something different, doing something new. But this ain't it, okay? This movie feels like it should have come out in, like, 2010. And (laughs) I just wasted my goddamn time with this. Let me know in the comments below if you too saw Terrell. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.